If you only have a few moments of time to waste, well, I have the game for you. I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I do the review of WarioWare Micro Minigames for the Game Boy Advance. Second Opinion Games. Unless you were living under a rock, then you already know what WarioWare is. It's just a quick collection of very short minigames that are done hilariously. Some of them are kooky, some of them are weird, some of them are just unexplainable, but they're all a really good time. And even though Wario is the main character in this game, it's really all about his friends. As you play through each friend, you learn the levels and the game inside and out. So you select a character. After about five of these little mini games, the game speeds up and moves just a hair bit faster. And then you play a few more. Then once again, moves a little faster. And then you play just a handful more. Then you come to a boss, which is just another mini game, only this time they don't last only five freaking seconds. Sometimes you're gonna recognize these, and other times they're gonna be brand new games. All of them are actually pretty fun, and some of them are weird, and I think they're intentionally weird to get your attention and really make it stick. My favorite character is 9Volt, who always has Nintendo-themed levels, and this is really cool, even though I wish I could play every single one of these quite a bit longer. Unfortunately, Ashley, the favorite goth girl of the series, is not in this first game, but there is still plenty of weird to go around. Sort of a superhero version of Wario is the final character of the game, and all of his minigames are about the most challenging, and there is a ton of them. And when you get to the final boss here, it's just Wario trying to track down some golden poop. And that's pretty hilarious, but not nearly as funny as this one scene when playing the game. It'll say, dodge the rocks, but in the Japanese version of the game, it actually said, dodge the human feces. Yeah, that's just how down and dirty this game really is. Now, every single minigame on this entire collection has three different versions of itself. A easy, medium, and hard. So, after you beat the game, you could actually unlock these pig elevators that you get one life, and just one life, to see how far you can get. And it could be on the easy, medium, or hard, or even the bosses themselves. Now, there's no way you're going to see everything this game has to offer the very first time through. So you're going to have to go back into every single character multiple times in order to track down their elusive and sometimes rare minigames. And then you're going to have to go into each character's grid and then play every single minigame until you reach a certain goal to unlock everything in this game 100%. And why would you want to do this? Because it has some of the best unlockables of all time and a freaking ton of them at that. Let's jump into the multiplayer games first. Yes, there are multiplayer games, usually just controlled by a single button, the L or the R button on top of the Game Boy Advance, or the Game Boy Micro. That means, yes, two of you can share a Game Boy Micro playing minigames on the road. The first one is just hurdles, where you just have to run and do a little jump maneuver with the button to clear the path in front of you. And eventually you'll get to the finish line and then you'll be able to rub it in your face how much better you are at jumping hurdles in a virtual landscape. Then there is Dong Dong, which is basically these little rods that go up and down, and you have to smash your opponent's head in. Yeah, that's something that's here. Now, it's not just that simple. Sometimes it slows down, and eventually levels here can take a rather long time. But you know what? It's fun in its own way. The chicken race is just makes you super frustrating mad because your friend will always try to cheat to win by waiting for you to go first and then either being a little bit less or a little bit more. So setting up clear rules before this one starts is very important. And then you play as a little remote control vacuum cleaner, just 
picking up stuff. Now, one person will always just hold the button in at all times, while the other person just tries to pick up the trash. And usually the person trying will win, but occasionally the person that just holds in the button and eats a freaking banana or applesauce next to you will occasionally take the lead. These are the multiplayer games on the card, now what about the rest of the minigames? Paper plane is a huge time waster. You just maneuver a plane down a series of obstacles and try and get the best time and the top score. I really wish it kept track of that best time though. If you really enjoy this game, well you could also pick it up on the 3DS eShop. Then we move on to skateboarding, where you just have to jump and duck different obstacles. And this one's a bit of a blast, and you pretty much just have to look out for your high score here. Jump Forever is a jump rope simulator. It starts off boring enough, but then it gets faster and faster. And then it starts moving slower and then faster randomly, and eventually you'll even move from side to side. This is fun in short bursts, but it's not something I like to play for a very long time. Fly Swatter's back. Yes, that Mario Paint fun fly smashing game is here in all of its glory. And it's a bit easier to play without having to worry about the mouse. I could get much farther here than I ever could on my own with traditional Mario Paint. That brings us to Dr. Wario. It's pretty much just like a single player only version of Dr. Mario, only crudely drawn in with Wario over top of Mario off to the side. It's everything you really want to do to kill time with Dr. Mario, which is pretty much what this whole game is. Eventually, you will unlock these final couple games, like Pyro, which is just a bird sticking out his tongue, eating leaves or something that's falling from the ground. If they happen to hit the ground, well, then you lose a block, and if you fall in the hole, you're dead. Also, if you get hit by the leaf things, you're dead. However, you can get certain power-ups to let you bring the blocks back back, and it does get challenging over time. Pyro 2 is also here, where instead of using your tongue, you spit seeds at the leave things to destroy them, and yeah, all the other rules apply. They're both really fun to play and are great, but the work that you have to put into to unlock these two is really a lot, so it might get a little tedious. Sheriff is the last minigame on here, and I saved it for last because it's really truly old school, based off of a much older game that I really want to mention here. And you basically just shoot up all the little bandits in order to save a girl. After 10 levels or so, well then there is a huge score multiplier. And if you could beat my top score, well then I will bow down to you because I put a ton of time into this game. Even though it starts out ridiculously easy and takes a very long time before it starts getting hard, slowly you will add different color to the world. Usually it's just with this heart at the end stage, but eventually you'll see your own character change color and even the girl you save. And at the very end, you will see all of your enemies change colors as well. This is a huge time waster and you will sink hours into it if you really decide that that's what your life comes down to. Now, WarioWare is a terrific series that's still going on to this day, and it's probably because this one was such a strong first game in the series. Eventually, it got sort of remade for the GameCube with more of a focus on multiplayer. The single-player experience here isn't nearly as good, so a lot of people just went out and bought a Game Boy Advance player just to play it on their big screen TV, which is exactly what I did. So it's that good that people are willing to spend money just to play it on a much bigger screen. It's also a huge time waster, the perfect pick up and play game for short visits to the doctor's office or anywhere you need to go making it the best Game Boy Advance game of just killing a little bit of time. So if really that's all you want is a small time waster, then for me, this is the best Game Boy Advance game there is. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Go. Got it? 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. And this is one of the few games that I've ever 100% completed. Just because sometimes I get bored really easy and I have to kill a little bit of time. Now I'm not saying that this is the best game for the Game Boy Advance for everyone. Some people like longer playthroughs. And for that, well, look for a video in the future. So until later, I will see you again, guys.